Today we got a cool one for you. I brought the expert on finding big game. Uh, this is my friend Tate Bradfield. Tate, you've killed over a hundred elk with you and your clients as you've kind of guided people around, mule deer, bear, everything you've guided in Alaska. You've been a packer and a guide in Idaho and Utah and all over the place you've hunted. Yep. So let's go through these 10 tips. The first one you said really surprised me, and that is 90% of the animals you kill started out with you driving on the road and spotting the game before you go in after them. Exactly. So as a guide, you have to guide sometimes for weeks on end. And so I learned very quickly that if I, did, if I committed myself to a canyon, I wouldn't be able to have the energy to necessarily find game in another canyon because uh, we had limited amount of time. So what I would do instead is I'd drive these roads, whether it was high or low, and I would be able to glass lots and cover lots of country, glass lots of mountainsides. And usually I'd find the elk, it might have been two or three miles from the road that I found the elk, but I'd usually be able to find the elk or the deer or bears uh, from the road. And then I would hike in to kill them from there. The reason I wanted you to talk about that first is I, I don't like the stigma that is kind of developing in the hunting industry about road hunting. And some of it is for good reason. Um, but, you know, a lot of the YouTube videos are, you have to hike in 14 miles and raft across the tor torrential river, and then you're allowed <laughs> to hunt. And unfortunately, I think what that leads a lot of people to do is somebody's coming from Kansas, Missouri, whatever, they're coming out west to hunt. They go on this epic adventure back in there, and then they're in a basin that's dead and all week, exhausted. and they're committed to it. Yep. So if you, if you commit to a basin, you might hike in two or three miles to get into that basin. It's going to take you all day to get out again. And if, if you don't see anything, you've just wasted one of five days of hunting. However, if you go out in the morning, and you glass, and you glass, and you glass, and you can't see any animals from the road, this isn't necessarily road hunting. You're not shooting from the road. You're just glassing from the road. You might have to hike three or four miles. It's still gonna hurt. So we're out bear hunting right now, beautiful location, and you spent a lot of time e-scouting that really paid off. I did. And so looking for game in general, mm -hmm. I mean, everything from mule deer to elk to bear, what are some of the hallmarks of the things that are most important to you? E-scout a lot before you get out. E-scouting is gonna be 50% of your hunt. And sorry, I should just cut in. E-scouting means you're on, com on the computer, you know, you're on Google Earth or on X or uh, Go Hunt. You're looking at maps, looking for things. Exactly, yeah. But you have to know your animals that you're gonna be hunting so that you can know where you need to research So give to me get an example, to. mule deer. Mule deer? What are the things you're looking for? Big bucks are gonna tend to hang up towards the top of the mountains. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna find mountains that I can come up and overlook and I wanna be able to look a huge basin and I wanna be able to look up that entire basin all the way around the ridges of the mountains. So while you're doing that e-scouting, roads are tricky. Yeah. I have made the mistake of planning like, okay, this is an awesome area, I'll drive in here. And then you go the morning of the hunt and it's closed. It's in, in Idaho and Utah, a lot of states, they strategically time when they close a ton of those roads to make access tough during the hunt. And, and it can make your hunt incredibly miserable when you go, if you don't plan around that, the fact that a road could be closed, it can make your hunt terrible. Yep. Because if you have all your eggs in one basket, you're gonna be miserable for that hunt. However, what I did on this hunt that we're on right now um, is I looked at like probably 10 to 15 different roads and I had to try eight of them before I found a road that would get me to where I wanted to be. By the way, we recorded a, an online course for Backfire Plus mm -hmm. while we're here um, called 24 Hour Bear. It's such a cool concept for the course. We're also doing episodes of Deer and Elk all on there. Backfire Plus is our subscription. Uh, it's reasonably priced. You get every course that we have, the Backfire Man cast, um, our banned YouTube videos, downloads, cheat sheets, all that stuff on there. But we recorded this course of 24 Hour Bear. The concept is, I picked the hunting unit. You don't know where we're going. <laughs> You're dropped in that unit and you have 24 hours to find that animal. And uh, you found five the very first day in yep. 24 hours. We found five bears and we recorded a course showing, I mean, just following along with you. What are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you turning there? Why are we going up this mountain <laughs> to learn how to do it? Because that was incredible. It was a lot of fun too. I. I, I have a hard time finding bear. And you were just like, I know exactly where to go. Let's, let's do this. That was pretty cool.
So one of the things you taught me here was you got to use the whole day. Every to bit hunt. of the day. And I'm definitely guilty of like, ah, whatever, we'll sleep in a little bit during the bears. The bears aren't going to be up until later. You're like, no, 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 7 a.m. we're up. <laughs> and we would not have killed the bear if it weren't for that. Yep. Um, that was really cool because when you're in the dead time, I found you're, you're saying, ah, we may not be seeing animals move around, but this is how we can take advantage of that dead exactly. time. Yep. Or same thing if you're deer hunting and it's just burning hot middle of the day. They're probably bedded down. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? So there's a couple of things you can do during the dead times of the day. Because if you only have a five day hunt and you just drew this tag and it's a really good tag and you only have five days to kill an animal, you don't want to waste a minute of that time. So what you're going to want to do is in the middle of the day, you can glass under all the trees in the shadows. And I, I, I mean, I could probably count on two hands how many, how many clients animals we've been able to take just by glassing in the middle of the day. So you're looking under, you know, big pine trees where they're in the shade, kind of tucked yeah, up just, under Yeah, just there. where you would want to be if you were hot and you had a fur coat. And glassing would slow down a whole lot then because there's not, you know, there aren't standing up moving. So exactly. you got to really look under each tree. You're, you know, at 400 yards, your, your spotting scope is on 60, as high as it'll go. And you're just looking for any flicker of movement. Another thing that I saw you doing is during those dead times, you were looking for sign. Mm -hmm. You know, we had rains here so we can, you know, walk around. Let's see if we see prints. Let's see where the scat is. And it's easy to see how fresh it is right after a fresh rain like that. Mm -hmm. And that really helped. I mean, again, about this don't waste time on a dead basin. We knew the basin wasn't dead because there was a lot of bear scat in there. There was. There was a lot of bear scat. Um, Another thing that's really good to do is just, just wander the ridge tops because if you just sit there in, in, in glass, you may not be able to see if there's scat and you might be committed there until the evening and then your, 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 your whole evening's gone. But if you walk around the whole rim of a basin, all of a sudden you know if there's elk in it because you, you know if there's tracks going up over into the basin. So hot weather, we know how to take advantage of that, but there are some like a lot of times people avoid, you know, they're planning their hunt. They're like, ah, I might not go up this weekend. It's supposed to snow or, you know, bad weather oh, yeah. events. How can you take advantage of that? The, the bad weather is usually the best time to hunt. Um, elk, deer, bears, moose, moose especially, to be honest with you, they actually like the bad weather. They move very, very heavily right before and right after bad weather. And I've killed many an elk right in the middle of a snowstorm or a rainstorm. Um, they know that they have a limited amount of time that they need to move and they can feel that the changes in the barometric pressures and if they're smarter than we are in this situation if you go out at the times of the day where it's right before a rainstorm or right after you're going to see animals moving how about calling i mean every species is a little bit different mm -hmm. but really every species there's some kind of calling element too how should people approach it? What does somebody do that's, you know, never even heard these sounds? How do you get to be effective there? I mean, there's a lot that goes into calling, but if there was one tip that I could give, um, don't over bugle and don't be afraid to cow call. Cow calls are much less, especially we're talking elk here. Um, cow calls are much less scary to bulls. Sometimes if a bull hears a bugle, they'll just run the other direction. But I've cow called right, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. It's 90 degrees outside and I've had bulls bugle back to me. And I've killed bulls at two o'clock in the afternoon quite often. Speaking of killing bulls and out there hunting, you have some really cool hunts for people to book. I do. So there's some hunts in Idaho where we're at currently, not in this unit, but it's a drop camp hunt. Um, it's $3,500. There's uh, deer and elk tags you can that are available for purchase. Um, so you got guaranteed tags yep, because for $3,500 mm -hmm. and it's drop camp. So they'll have like a nice tent for you have a good spot picked out. Yes, they'll have a tent up there for you. They'll have cots up there for you, all your foods included with it. Um, and this outfitter is actually one that I've hunted bear, bears with in the past. Um, he taught me a lot of what I know about bear hunting. Uh, he's an awesome outfitter, he's a great guy. So the way to find you is go to Booker Brad on Facebook. Yep. Just go to facebook.com. There's a little search bar you type in Booker Brad and, and you're going to get Booker Brad. <laughs> and if you join that page, it's actually really good because you have a ton of just, you know, hey, got a landowner tag available yep. and you can pick it up or hunts. You, I like that you find some cheap hunts. I'm all about the cheap hunts. I try really hard. I call about 600 landowners a year trying to find tags for people. Very cool. Everybody wants to find the 
big animals, right? Yes. Um, and it can be frustrating when you spend all year watching YouTube videos and you see people taking giant deer, giant elk, and then you come out here and it's all little forkies and spikes. So, <laughs> it, so what are some hallmarks for each species of, what are some ways you get them into, you know, a nice representation of each species? So the thing to remember is that on a YouTube show, they make it look easy because they took five days worth of hard labor and put it in 15 minutes and they just show you the highlights. And I know a lot of these guys <laughs> who are very well known for hunting on YouTube and I know that they are hunting 20 days straight and yep. that's how they got four deer that week. Yes. They hunted 20 days. And that's why they got a you know 180 inch buck as well. Mm -hmm. The things to remember, um, the mule deer bucks are going to hang up towards the tops of the ridges. That's where the bigger bucks are going to be. Um, How about the elk? The elk, uh, it depends on the time of year. The bigger bulls, usually the deeper you go, sadly, the bigger the bulls get. However, that's not, you know, animals are where you find them when you find them. Um, in the, the late season, you're going to be looking for, for, you know, they want food, water, and shelter. They're going to be recovering from the rut with, with that at that time of year. They're going to be in darker timber. Um, and they're going to most likely be alone or maybe a small bachelor group. Tell us one story of a hunter that you guided without any names <laughs> who botched an amazing opportunity. Oh, I don't know. Which one do I say? <laughs> um, so I had a client that we'd worked for, I called in 14 bulls for him in this week. Jeez. <laughs> and uh, we just couldn't quite make it happen. Something would go wrong. We were archery hunting and I finally get this bull just screaming at us. And we see two bulls across the canyon, one's above us screaming. And I'm trying to get one of the bulls across the canyon to come to us. And the herd bull ends up coming down the, ma the mountain after about 45 minutes of me trying to get this other bull to come over. And I get this bull to 30 yards, broadside, stops, and he shoots and he uses his 20 yard pin. Ah. And that was probably a little over a 300 inch bull. Ah, they're always big when you miss. They are, they are. <laughs> if you hit it, it's tiny. And they grow, <laughs> they grow when you miss too. <laughs> so you've worked with, I mean, many, many dozens of clients and seen shooting, um, shooting skills. I mean, obviously we all got to train, <laughs> but are there a couple maybe tips you've had that could help people to seal the deal? Yeah, so the biggest thing that I find with clients, especially when they're coming back from, from whitetail hunting, um, is a lot of them have never shot over 100 yards in their life, and most of them are, are pretty used to shooting from almost a bench rest position. Um, when you're, when you're going to come out on a western hunt, make sure that you practice laying down, make sure that you practice kneeling, make sure that you practice standing. Because although standing isn't a great shot, if you wound an animal, you're very likely going to have to get in closer and shoot at standing. A great opportunity there. You know, if you're coming from the west or the midwest, you're in a place where it's tough to find that long range. Just plan to show up to your hunt a day early. You got 24 hours to go practice shoot uphill, practice shooting at 300 yards. Yep. It's at least something, and to make sure the gun is still dialed in after the trip. If you had 24 hours before the hunt to really try a few things, I think that'd help a lot. And Jim has a lot of, of, of good tips that have actually helped me be able to shoot longer ranges and canyons as well. So watch his channel because he has a lot of tips that can help you learn how to shoot. Gotta do it. Well, Tate, thanks for being here. Go check out Booker Brad on Facebook and everybody else. Good luck on your hunts.